let's make some cool realistic tears. Hey guys, it's Nemanja and welcome to another really fun episode. Today I will show you how to make realistic tiers in Photoshop and this can be useful in various situations. So for example, you have a photo shooting, you have a model, you want the model to be sad or maybe crying, but in that moment of time, model cannot actually cry, cannot produce the tears. So if you want to make even more punchy image, more dramatic uh, story overall, you can do that later in Photoshop to add those tears. So without further ado, let's jump straight into Photoshop and let me show you how you can do it. Right guys, as you can see here, we have a photo of a woman that is sad, that is actually trying to cry on a set. But if you zoom this a little bit, you can see that there are no tears on her face. And I actually want to add some tears here to make this photo a little bit more punchy, more dramatic to tell a story a little bit better. And this is really easy and simple process to be done. Just follow a few steps that I will show you today. So first I will create a new empty layer. I like to name it tears. I just like to name my layers. And now I will just use a regular brush, not too soft, not too hard, something around 50, 60%. It doesn't matter exactly. 100% opacity and you can use any color that you like. It doesn't matter. I will use white because I already have it here. So I will just first create some kind of a tear shape, maybe like this. And then I will use a smudge tool and just, just define this shape a little bit better. Something like, like this looks pretty, pretty cool. All right. And this is it. As you can see, in a matter of a couple of seconds, we have really nice realistic tear effect in Photoshop. No, now the fun starts begin. Now we need to convert this into realistic tier effect. So to be able to do this, we just need to go and double click on the tier layer right there to load layer style dialog box. And first thing what I like to do is to lower the fill opacity all the way to the zero because I don't want this tier to have any kind of fill color. So all the way to zero and that's it. Then I like to go to the shadows, drop shadow, click on it and go inside to play with the settings. And here we need to change the shadow direction, the softness, the hardness to, to match everything like the, the, like the shadow already in the image. So basically we need to match the light directions and the shadow color and hardness like everything else on this photo. So basically the light direction is going from something like this, okay? And if we zoom it a little bit, you can see that this shadow is not black, it's more like skin tone, but darker and more saturated. This is black shadow, I don't like it. So I can go always here and change it to choose some kind of a skin tone, something like this, make it more dark, a little bit more saturated. And this is pretty cool. Let's see, this is pretty, pretty decent. And you can always play with some other settings here. This needs to be in multiply because it's better. It doesn't need it. It can be in normal bending mode, but you will see something. Else. So I like it to have in multiply blending mode and these settings vary from the image to the image. So this is pretty good. I like it. And this is really nice, but it's not quite there yet. The next step is to go to bevel and emboss, click on it. And you can see that this is already starts looking like a real tear shape, but it's not there yet. So here inside bevel and emboss, we have a lot of things that we can change. And down below we have shading. So basically we have opacity of the highlights, opacity of the shadows. And because we already introduced the shadows down below, I like to remove it all the way to zero. I don't want to add additional shadows. And now you can see this looks much, much better, more close to the real tier effect. Only thing that we need to play with this here is the reflection part. And one really cool tip here about the highlights is that you need to match the highlight type, actually the light source that it's hitting this tier with the light source that is actually on the image by default. So here, this image, if we zoom out, you can see that there is a harsh light source coming on her, her face. We have a little bit harsher shadows and we have here some reflections, etc. And there is another light source from her left side, our right side. So we need to match this. This, this highlight right now that you can see it here is more like from a little bit bigger light source, maybe a little bit softer. But if there is like really soft light, maybe cloudy day, 
we would, wouldn't have any kind of harsh reflections on the tears. So you need to think about that. Maybe just go to the Google and uh, Google some tears on uh, face images and see different kinds of reflections from different kinds of lighting conditions and just try to think about that. So it's really easy and simple. Just You just need to go through this several times and to get used to it. So we need to make a little bit smaller reflection. So let's play with this. I like to go all the way down all the way to 1000%, maybe size, oh, something like this, maybe. Let's see. This is pretty cool. So I like it like that. And let's go here maybe to make the highlights a little bit brighter, like these highlights right there. So this is pretty cool. If I press OK, and zoom it, you can see that this is really nice looking tear. I really like it. Only thing that is missing is the path from the eye to this, this right uh, water drop, teardrop right here. So how we can do this? Really easy. Just use the same layer with the same styles right here that we made. Use the brush. Doesn't matter the color. I will go with the 30 or so maybe percent we will see and make the brush smaller and just create a path, okay? Something like this. And this is really nice. Of course, you can now use eraser and just erase maybe here, make this part thinner and just, just play with this. You know, this is just everything about playing, having fun with this, adding a few effects here and there, maybe like that. And this really looks like a real tear. Of course, if you invest a little bit more time to maybe add the path of the tear a little bit, uh, to make it a little bit better, etc. It will have even better impression overall. But there is another cool trick that we can add here to make it even more realistic. And that's to add some highlights to the skin because tear is practically water. And when the lights hit the water, it will amplify the highlights under the surface. So here we would have a little bit more pronounced highlights and we'll create a new layer, name it highlights. Okay, and I will choose a brush with the alt. I will sample skin tone and go with this into screen blending mode because I want to make this a little bit brighter. And I just want to use 10% opacity and really, really soft brush, 0% hardness, and just to add some highlights right here. But I don't want to add anywhere else except inside this tear shape. So unfortunately here, we ha when we have this kind of effect, we cannot go and clip it to affect only this layer because there is no fill. Fill is now set to zero and as you can see, there are no effect. If we unclip it, we will have this effect, but we need to find some workaround. So there is fortunately workaround for this. You need to click control and hold it to click on the layer to load this selection and then just click on the layer mask to load the layer mask. So this is how the layer mask looks like the shape of the tear and then go right here and just just add this really cool effect. Also, let's make it brush smaller and add it here too. And just with this, as you can see, this tear looks really, really nice. So before this effect and just with small spicy thing of the highlights, we have really nice, cool looking tear. All right, you just saw one really cool way how you can add realistic tear effect to your photos, but there is one thing that can be improved even more. So let me show you that really quickly. If we zoom this tear, you can see that the reflection here is pretty much uniform, just one straight line across the tear shape. And in real life, this is usually not the case. And here this is happening just because of some limited options in Bevel and Amos dialog box. So the best thing is to create our reflections manually. So to be able to do this, just uncheck the Bevel and Amos dialog box, create a new layer. I will name it reflections. Okay, and I just want to copy the same layer mask from the layer below by holding Alt or Option key, drag it right there. So now I will use a lasso tool and just go and make some irregular shapes like that. And by holding Alt and Backspace or Option and Backspace on the Mac, I will just fill it with a white color, foreground color. Now I will go with a blur tool, just blur this a bit, okay, because now it's too harsh. And also I can uncheck this uh, chain icon between, between the layer and the mask and move this a little bit, maybe even rotate it, something like this to, to look really cool. And also I will lower the opacity a little bit. 
So this is awesome. And create a new layer. This is reflection number two. And here I will use uh, just the brush, maybe 20 or so percent opacity. Just create, or maybe 100 and then we will lower the opacity. Just create reflection right here. Use a smudge tool. Smudge this in the shape of a tear. Like this. Awesome. We can move it a little bit to the left and lower the opacity. And also, as you can see, guys, right here, the light is coming also from this direction right there. So that means that maybe we would have a small reflection right here. So let's let's make this too. Why not? We can do that. And this is really nice. And also we can go back in our effects and create another shadow, inner shadow. So right there to go on this side right here. As you can see, this is how the shadow looks. So I'll just we make it like like that just a little bit. This is before, this is after, just small shape right there. I really like it. So this is it. This is with the reflections that we made with the bevel and embos. Let's hide our reflections. This is cool. This is again, cool thing, but with our reflections, I like it even more. This is like a really nice, realistic looking tier. Read guys, that's it for today's episode. I really hope that you like it and that you learn something really cool, interesting and fun from this one. Also, now you can add even more tiers, different size, different shapes, etc. It's up to you to practice, experiment and have fun. Also, guys, you can save now this tier preset to your styles and next time you can just one click and have your tier ready. So it's really simple and easy to be done. Actually, let me show you really quickly for you guys who stick with me till the end, like a bonus tip. You just need to go to a window, styles, and make sure that you're on layers that contain these effects. And just go right here, say new style preset, name it tears, for example, press OK, and that's it. Now you can hide this, create a new layer, and whatever you make here, something really cool, you just go back to styles, click on this, and here it is, of course, because we uncheck bevel and ambos, you can check it back, and we have this really cool effect. You can draw, paint, whatever. With this, you have your tear ready to be applied here. All right, guys, so now that's definitely it for today's episode. If you have any questions regarding to this episode, just leave me down there in the comment section below. Have fun, experiment, and see you in my next fun tutorial. Bye-bye.